Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Angels we have heard on high Singing sweetly through the night And the mountains in reply Echoing their brave delight Day. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah, Isaiah. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it be known throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. I will not give, give your grain to be food for the, your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, the, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round him, righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all of the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all of the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be the second reading is from Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any words of righteousness that he, we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. This spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what, they had, been to- what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Messy Christmas, my friends. No, I did not just make a mistake. Messy Christmas is exactly what I meant. Now, I'm well aware that the standard greeting at this season is Merry Christmas. But I believe that if we want to celebrate this holy occasion in a way that aligns with its origin story, Messy Christmas would be a far more fitting and useful greeting. Now, why am I messing with our beloved Merry Christmas? Bear with me. I have a good reason. As many of you know, just over a week ago, my wife gave birth to a wonderful baby boy. And I could not be more happy and grateful. And anyone listening who has ever given birth or been a partner and close witness to a birth will probably resonate with what I'm about to say. Birth is a wild, uncontainable, and extremely messy event. It defies any and all attempts at planning and control And it takes its own course, requiring the complete surrender of mother, baby, and anyone else involved. I believe it's no accident that the first of the historical events that make up the incredible story of salvation that we find in Jesus Christ is the event of birth. A clergy colleague of mine once said that God could hardly have picked a more messy and inefficient way of saving the human race than the Incarnation. And my friend is right. The birth of Christ, sublimely beautiful and powerful as it was, was like any birth. It was wild, unpredictable, and messy. God's Messiah could easily have been some grand angel in flowing robes, riding into Judea on a magnificent war horse. And I'm sure that such an entrance would have gotten far more attention and respect than Jesus' birth did. But that isn't what happened. Instead, we got an impromptu birth to migrant parents in an out-of-the-way stable. We got a messy Christmas. But maybe this is the entire point. Maybe salvation isn't supposed to be grand, loud, or even immediately recognizable. Maybe it's supposed to be messy and inefficient, a halting and awkward process that demands both our complete attention and our complete 
surrender. And speaking of messy and inefficient, that brings me to our current situation. I doubt anyone will argue with me that it's very messy. And it's messy in ways beyond the immediately obvious. I have noticed in recent weeks a growing tension in our church community, and it mirrors a much larger tension in our society. And let me say for a second, this is thoroughly understandable. We come upon a Christmas that is arguably the most challenging and difficult one that I have seen in my lifetime, certainly in my tenure here, and we have lost a few of our beloved just in these last few weeks. We are raw, my friends. And we all agree that the current situation is dire, and we are deeply dedicated to seeing it improve. This much we all have in common. But as we move outward from this central point, we begin to diverge somewhat. On the one hand, we have individuals who believe that the best and wisest course of action in these difficult days is to meticulously adhere to the recommendations we have received. Recommendations such as face masks, sanitation, distancing ourselves from others, and so on. And perhaps observing these guidelines even more strictly than the mandates we've been given suggest. And on the other hand, we have individuals who believe that in at least some of these actions, the unintended consequences may be doing us more harm than good. Now, I am 100% confident that both sides of this debate, all sides of this debate, for it's a very multifaceted one, have reached their conclusions prayerfully and with reason and compassion. And nonetheless, it leaves us in a very messy situation where all sides look at the others and say, you are being reckless and dangerous, perhaps even at the cost of my life or the life of someone I love. But it is precisely into such a mess that the Christmas miracle invites us. We are invited to contemplate God becoming incarnate in a fragile, vulnerable human body right in the middle of fear, confusion, and chaos such as what faces us right now. And we are invited to hold and to love one another in light of that miracle, whether or not we're successful at resolving the tensions that divide us. Now, I can hear the objection right now. That's all fine and good in normal times, Mr. Preacher, but this COVID situation we're facing right now is a matter of life and death. I can't afford to be welcoming and tolerant of those who see it another way. Yes, you're right. It is a matter of life and death. But that makes the Christmas miracle and what it calls us to more poignant and more urgent, not less. Birth itself puts us in that liminal space between life and death. And even after Jesus' successful birth, I think I'm on solid ground in saying that everyday life in Roman-occupied Judea made even the year 2020 look 
pretty tame by comparison. So what I'm saying boils down to this. Christmas doesn't always give us what we want, or at least what we think we want. It doesn't bring peace in the sense of ending all the dangers we face and resolving all the tensions that divide us. In fact, Christmas calls us to a very difficult thing. It calls us to remember that what inaugurated God's master plan of salvation was an event in which he showed up humble and powerless, right in the midst of all of those dangers and tensions. And in doing so, he asked and still asks us to unite at the heart and to love one another without our outward circumstances changing one bit for the better. But the most important thing to carry out of Christmas is this. Neither the first Christmas nor any of the ones that have followed fix everything outwardly. But that is not because God is cruel and indifferent or because God's plan is too small to fix those things, but rather because the plan is too big and God's dream for us and for all of creation is infinitely grander than shielding us from dangers and resolving our quarrels. A single sentence says what Christmas is really all about. God became human so that human might become divine. God shares in our created life to throw the door wide open for us to share in God's creative life. And for this to happen, we have a tremendous amount of growing to do. In the words of St. Paul, we must shed the corruptible and put on the incorruptible. We must shed the mortal and put on the immortal. We cannot do this if God simply steps in and solves all of our problems for us. So instead, God shows up as one of us. God is born with all of the wildness and messiness that entails and lives as a mortal creature. And God bids us to become like that mortal creature, tempted to judge, tempted to to despair, tempted to accuse, tempted to anger, and yet so centered in the divine nature that he did not succumb to these temptations. His knowledge of God as his Father and all creatures even the ones who nailed him to a cross as his sisters and brothers did not waver. And as a reward, God gave him the name that is above every name. This, my friends, is God's great plan of salvation, a plan for us to become like that. And it begins with our contemplation of the Christmas miracle. So can we contemplate that miracle at the end of this uniquely messy and divisive year? And can we accept its invitation to become more like the Christ child whose birth we celebrate today? 
can we remember with certainty that God is our divine Father and Mother, and that every creature, even or perhaps especially the ones we find most threatening, is our sister and our brother. Can we hold this great truth in our hearts when faced with members of our own community who challenge us on points we find difficult, even points of life and death. I pray that we can, because that is what the Christmas miracle is all about. Messy Christmas, my friends. Let us now together reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With boundless joy in the mystery of the Incarnation, let us pray, saying, Word made flesh, hear our prayer. O God, who became flesh and dwelt among us, you call your people to unite in worship, that we may receive power to become your children, divine beings in whom your word has hands and feet. Pour out your blessing upon the church throughout the world that gathers for this purpose. Send this blessing especially today upon the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and we pray, <clears throat> and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the people of Bethlehem. Pour out your spirit also upon the Episcopal Church and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, the Church of the Incarnation in San Francisco, and the Church of the Nativity in San Rafael. Let your blessing also come to the Asbury United Methodist Church in Livermore. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. O oh God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask for your love to take wings in all the nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially upon Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Gavin, our governor, John, our mayor, Bob, our newly elected mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles 
in this and every land. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask for your love to take wings in all nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially, oh, I read that already, I'm sorry. O God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic, in the fear and uncertainty that surround it, we lift up to you all those who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially for the first responders during this COVID pandemic, for all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, Brad O and Brad S. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from adversity and harm. A word made flesh, hear our prayer. <clears throat> a word made flesh, this congregation gathers together as a people inspired by your first coming and looking for your coming again. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Olivia, Becky, Carl, Kathy, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslova, and Tamara, Glenis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, Janice, Jim, and Janet, Lisa B, Luke, Marge, and family, Marie R, Marie R, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nan D, Nick, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sharon, Sylvia P, Steve W and children, Tamara S, the Boer family, the Montgomery family, and the Sherman family. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, in your passion and resurrection, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed this life, especially Chief Ron Scott, Vern P, Joan B, Elda M, Carl M, Lisa M, Walt D, Wilma M, and Matthew S, and raise them to everlasting glory in your kingdom. O word made flesh, hear our prayer. And now, O Christ, in eager anticipation of your coming kingdom, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our other needs and concerns, and we offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life.
Oh God, we thank you that your dream and your purpose for us is nothing less than that we might share in your divine nature. We pray that you would give us grace to accept patiently the challenge that that entails, the challenge that you do not instantly fix all our problems, but rather give us Christ as a pattern, as footsteps in which we can follow, footsteps that lead us to your heavenly dwelling. All this we ask in his most holy name. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also also with you. you. Well, now I'll say it the normal way, my friends. Merry Christmas. Uh, Whenever and wherever you happen to be tuned into this, it is my hope and prayer that even uh, in this most unique and strange year, you are finding uh, the joy and the wonder of the incarnation and that you are able to commune with God and uh, commune with those you love in your heart, whether or not you are in physical proximity. Um, Please know that you are being prayed for by your church and uh, that every bit of love and Christmas joy we have is being sent outward to you. If you happen to be new to our midst and somebody who's not uh, terribly familiar with and to St. Bartholomew's, a heartfelt welcome. My name is Andy. I'm the priest and the pastor here. Please don't hesitate to use the contact information on the website. Uh, My email is right there as well as the church phone number. Would love to hear from you and get to know you better in the days to come. Please also be aware that you are about to witness the consecration of Holy Communion. Um, Any and all who wish to receive the consecrated bread can come either or both of this afternoon, Christmas Eve, uh, at 5 p.m., or a week from today, Thursday the 31st of December, uh, at 5 p.m., when we honor the Holy Name of Jesus, uh, a major festival within the 12 days of Christmas. At both occasions, we will have parking lot worship, and there will be a moment to receive the Blessed Sacrament. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door. And we are blessed forevermore. Cry 
Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting whole. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, 
In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God presented in joyful anticipation of your communion with our Lord.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this holy day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of the Word made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.